Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Pong Sports, which was a 1977 release from Atari, also known as Video Olympics, and it was part of the Atari 2600's launch lineup of nine games. The game as a whole features a large number of variations on Pong for one to four players, with most games requiring two or four players. Many of the games were based on sports themed versions of Pong that you'd find on standalone Pong consoles that you could connect to your television that were pretty widely available at the time. And it was praised at the time of its original release by Video Magazine for providing solid standbys that are still lots of fun, and I can certainly back that up. So let's go play Pong Sports. Okay, here we are once again with Atari Flashback Classics, and today we're taking a look at Pong Sports. So this is going to be um, another one of those uh, multi-part affairs uh, where I show you a bit of single player first. There's not much single player to show you in Pong Sports. Uh, and then I'm going to hand over to Future Pete, who is going to commentate over some recorded footage of uh, him and his wife playing. And indeed, uh, me and my wife, if you will. All right, before we do that, though, let's have a look at the manual. So Pong Sports Game Program Instructions. We can see all of these sports on offer there, including hockey, soccer, some brown stuff. <laughs> Bit of a blurry scan. Anyway, um, turn the knob to move the paddles. Press the red controller button to speed hit, whammy, TM, catch, TM the ball, or jump the paddle, depending on the game you play. So whammy uh, is a system where you can put sharper angles on your return hits. Press the red controller button as the ball makes contact with the pedal. The angle will continue on your return hit as long as you press the red controller button or until your opponent returns the hit. Uh, catch is press the red controller button as the ball hits the pedal and the ball sticks to the pedal. Um, but it will fly off the pedal if you make sudden movements. Uh, and then speed up is quite simply you press the button and speed up. Right, so there's lots and lots and lots of different modes of play in this. So beginning with Pong, um, then you've got Soccer, Foos Pong, Hockey, Quadra Pong, which we won't be playing today because we don't have four people here to uh, to play, uh, Handball, Volleyball, and Basketball. So lots of different ways to play this game. Uh, I'm going to show you the, the one-player Robot Pong first of all. Uh, and then, as I say, I'll hand over to Future Pete, and uh, he will talk you through the rest of the game modes available in this. So, uh, right, one player Pong with speed up. So let's hit game reset, and off we go. So I am the green player over on the right. The computer is the orange player. And we're playing to 21. If I sound confused about that later on, it's because I'm actually recording this one player footage uh, after Future Pete has done his thing. So technically I'm even further Future Pete, so isn't that confusing? But through the magic of editing, I can throw things into a non-linear time distortion paradox while I'm playing Pong, which is quite an achievement. But anyway, there's only so much to say about this really because it you know it's pong it's pong but more colorful is the thing that was sort of the attractive selling point of pong sports was the fact that you could play pong in color because of course the original pong arcade game was just black and white and most of the um standalone plug and play pong consoles that you could connect to your television in the 70s were black and white as well. Because you have to remember, a lot of people didn't have a colour television at this time. And so sort of being, a being able to play video games with awesome colour would have been quite a novelty. I'm bad at this. You notice the, the ball keeps speeding up. That's because I'm I'm pressing the controller button to do the speed up thing. And it's uh, usually usually ending in disaster for me, so I'm not sure why I keep doing it. It does make the game more interesting though. Just 
dodging out of the way. No. Oh, he's going to win. Unless I can stage some sort of spectacular comeback. Which is looking unlikely right now. I'll be honest. There we go. Okay, so that is one play Pong with speed up. I'll just show you a quick game with Whammy as well so you can see what difference that makes. Uh, and then we will move on to the two-player action. So Whammy, if I can hit the ball... If you, if you watch, when you move it, you can actually sort of press and release the button to change the angle the ball's moving at. And throw off your opponent that way. It's not quite so easy to throw off your the, the computer opponent with that, but against a human player, they, this would be quite effective. But if you if you just return it straight horizontal like that, it doesn't really do much. Actually, saying that, it is quite effective for getting it around the computer. Because if you can see he's going for it, you can just like sharpen the angle on it and bend it round him, basically. <laughs> Oh, that's pleasingly silly. I like that. Didn't really get to grips with what that was all about in the two-player modes, but yeah, sort of spending a bit of time with it here in single-player. Yeah, I can see the value of that now. And I can see how it would be really annoying in two-player mode. So I'm, I'm glad we didn't spend too much time using uh, Whammy. Nice. Oh, you, can, you can even whammy it up when you serve it. So, like, before you've even hit it, you can bend it around your opponent for a nice ace. There we go. Nicely done. You can't whammy it on the way back, though, obviously. That would be silly. Not like the otherwise realistic action on this... Pong Sports Video Olympics Simulator. They're having a much more even match. Now I can cheat, basically. <laughs> Is it cheating if both players technically have access to the same function? I mean, I don't think the computer has access to the whammy function because he never uses it. But it's certainly an effective means of getting around him. I'll tell you now. Nice. And if you want to go, and I, I will enjoy a victory for once. I mean, I, I enjoy some victories in the two-player mode, but against a computer, I normally don't do very well at Pong. But when I have whammies on my side, and not in the press your luck, Variety. <laughs> Is it pressure like that as whammies? I can't remember. I've watched the Game Grumps episodes where they play game show games on the NES so many times now, I've just forgotten. Which terrible game show game is which? Anyway, that is that. That is uh, one player robot pong with whammy, uh, and you then straight onto the two player modes. So what I'm going to do now, 
I'm going to hand over to Future Pete. He will take you on a guided tour of all the two-player modes in Pong Sports. So we'll see you in just a moment. Okay, Future Pete here. Here we are with Pong Sports. Uh, I'm joined by my wife, who is playing on the, uh, I forget, right-hand side, I think. Um, no, other way around. I'm playing on the right, and she's playing on the left. Um, yeah, so we begin with a straightforward game of one-on-one -on -one Pong. And this is actually quite interesting, because it does not have some of the flaws that the arcade original version of Pong has. Like, you may recall when I covered the um, the original arcade version of Pong on here, I managed to get into a sort of endless rally with the computer at one point, just going back and forth at the bottom of the screen. Just a slightly different way that the screen is laid out on this prevents that from happening. Which is good. There are actually several different variants on most of the games in this. Uh, one is called Speed Up. And one is called Whammy. Uh, in the speed up mode, what you can do is you can press the fire button to speed up the ball. And in Whammy mode, you can press the fire button to sort of apply more spin to the ball. Uh, now, we didn't actually figure out what speed up meant until much later. So you, you will see the point in this video where we figure out what speed up actually means. Uh, whammy, we tended not to bother with um, for the most part. But yeah, as you can see, this this basic mode here, this is just straightforward Pong, paddle controlled Pong. So in the Atari Flashback Classics collection here, we have the the collection standard take on paddle controls, which is very sensitive analog controls. Uh, but as always, I will remind you of my special technique to make life a lot easier for yourself, which is um, to start by pushing in a particular direction in this case push in the direction that your paddle is on so in my case i was pushing right um, and then move the analog stick around the circular uh, indentation that it's in as if you're sort of rotating a dial around there and you'll find that allows you to be a lot more sensitive and have a lot more precise control over where you're moving now the downside to that is because you're constantly pushing in one direction it does make your finger hurt after a little while um but, you know, if you're up for a, a game of Pong, you, 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 you basically need to suck it up until you win. <laughs> now, that is one thing we weren't sure of here. So we, we were playing this game of Pong, and we realized we, that we didn't know what you were supposed to play to. We thought it was 10 initially, and then we went past 10, and that didn't happen. So we carried on playing, just to see what would happen. And you'll notice that as we continued, my wife over on the left was starting to get much more comfortable with the controls. So although these panel controls in the collection might initially seem quite awkward and quite difficult to figure out, just a little bit of practice and you can be pretty much as sensitive with them as you can with the real paddle. Which is really cool. But yeah, then we thought, oh, maybe a place of maybe a place of fifteen. So there I am, closing in on my fifteenth point, failing to score my fifteenth point. At this point, I was wondering if it was one of the sort of classic Atari timed games where you had two minutes and 16 seconds, because that was the optimal amount of time to have fun, according to one guy at Atari. Uh, but no, as you can see, we blew past 15 and kept going. Can you guess where it's going to end? Is it going to end? Is it ever going to end? I guess we'll find out soon. But yeah, it's been going for nearly five minutes at this point. This was just starting to feel just a little bit on the long side. But it does add a little bit of variety to the experience by the fact that um, 
as you progress, the scoring sounds change. They're gradually going up in pitch to sort of reflect you getting closer and closer to that target area. And if we had figured out the speed up mechanic a little bit earlier, this game would have probably been over a bit quicker. But as it stands, we didn't figure that out until a couple of games in, as you'll see shortly. Up to 20, still going. It's 21, you played 21. Um, offhand, I'm not sure the relevance of that. Is that what you play to in ping pong? I don't know. But anyway, um, so we're going to cycle through a couple of four player options. So if you have four people ready to play, you can do that. Uh, and on the original Atari 2600, because you could collect, connect paddles to your Atari 2600 in pairs uh, in a single controller port, um, that meant that you could um, you could have four people playing a game. Right, our next mode is Super Pong. And Super Pong has you moving two paddles up and down. You have a paddle at the front and a paddle at the back. And just moving your paddle uh, causes them both to move, which proved to be surprisingly challenging. <laughs> because although, although there's no difference in how they move... So keeping an eye on both at once and how the ball is interacting them with them, particularly around that middle part of the screen, is really quite challenging. It doesn't sound like it would make a huge difference, but it really, really does. So you may have seen at the start, this time we're playing with the whammy mode, which means that if you hit the ball with your paddle and press the fire button, you can sort of curve your shot slightly, which makes it a little bit more unpredictable for your opponent to deal with. It's not a huge effect or anything, but it is significant enough to sometimes throw them off their game slightly. Now, by this point, I was feeling reasonably comfortable with this, but my wife is really struggling with this one for some reason, although she, she quite enjoyed our initial Pong game. She found the moving of the multiple panels to be quite a challenge. And I get it completely, because it's really daunting when you first start playing this mode. It doesn't look like it would be, but no, it makes a huge difference. And sort of having to split your attention between both of them, particularly when the ball is moving quickly, it's difficult. But even so, as you can see, she put up a, a valiant fight, for sure. But this match was over a little bit quicker than our previous ones. Thankfully. <laughs> but as you can see there, she, I mean, despite her difficulty, she is starting to get the hang of it there. She's just scoring a respectable number of points on me. And it's not just purely because of my own incompetence. She's actually making some good shots on me as well, so... That was a nice use of whammy there. So again, this goes to 21. I think I think most of the games in this go to 21. If I remember correctly. Nearly there. Always miss with that front one. I found it, found it very tricky to hit with the front paddle for some reason. I think it, it might be just because it, it sort of throws your rhythm off a bit. It's not quite the same rhythm you, you expect from Pong. It's, it's a more rapid rhythm. And especially if it's coming from your opponent's back paddle, it's sort of an, an offset rhythm as well. One more point for me. And there we are. Super Pong victory. So you can play Super Pong four player as well, cooperative. Um, and then we move on to Soccer, which is essentially a variant on Super Pong. But the difference is that um, if rather than you having both paddles on your side of the screen, it alternates. So you have one protecting your goal area and you have one up front attacking your opponent's goal area. And you'll also notice that 
there is a goal area as well, which is not something you had in standard Pong. So there's actually walls you can bounce off on the side of the screen where you would normally be um, trying to knock the ball out of. And so in this one, you're trying to protect your goal with your one pedal and go on the offensive with the other pedal. Now, I found this one a little bit easier to deal with than um, Super Pong. But I think my wife may have found this more confusing. Perhaps due to the fact that you, you, you're dividing your attention even more. Even though you're only using one controller to move both of them, you're still dividing your attention between two of them. It also seems quite a bit more difficult to score a point in this one because of the limited goal area that you've got here. It feels a bit more challenging to actually score a point. And again, the positioning of the paddles can make for a sort of variable rhythm to the game, which adds a bit of interest. It's like you saw a moment ago, the back and forth between my attacker and my wife's keeper over on the left-hand side. So yeah, just to remind you, I am the right-hand player, so in this case I'm the purple player. And my wife is the yellow player. And Kerry is playing Animal Crossing. And ten points to me. you notice at this point we still haven't figured out speed up yet. We get there in the end, don't worry. Meanwhile, I'm really starting to get the grips of angling your shots so that you can get them into the goal nicely. Fifteen two, it's going well. And again, we played twenty one in here. Just like in real soccer. <laughs> No, so there's, there's no time-limited games. They're all play until someone wins. So on the one hand, that's good, because that allows for sort of spectacular comebacks. Uh, but on the other, if you're playing someone with a very different skill level to you, it can make the entire experience feel fairly excruciating. <laughs> But we're nearly there. Oh, a nice save, but ultimately in the goal. One more shot. Putting the pressure on. And in it goes. Right, so again, there's some four player modes uh, with all sorts of different variants on how your players are ranged out. So then we have Foosbong. Which is similar in concept, except rather than controlling one paddle, you've got a, like an entire pole of paddles that move up and down. So rather than moving one paddle the entire distance of the screen, you instead have to move several paddles into the optimal position. Which might not sound like a huge adjustment, but it really is. And this is where things started to get interesting. Because as I recall, it was this game where someone figured out speed up. <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. So I'm actually 
actually lagging behind by... Well, just one now. <laughs> Equalised. But yeah, you've got kind of got more flexibility in how you defend in this one. Oop. There's the speed up. <laughs> I believe those those two goals that were scored were closely followed by what the fuck. <laughs> there we go. So at that point, we realised that pressing the fire button when you hit the ball makes it go faster and that's what speed up means not as I initially thought that the game gradually speeds up as it goes through because that ha obviously hadn't been happening you see suddenly suddenly and magically these games become a lot more dynamic and exciting because we both know how to intimidate the other person with speedy shots now And this is why the 21 point uh, victory boundary isn't too much of a problem because once you start making use of these mechanics then you'll find the whole game goes a whole lot quicker. <laughs> and speed up is available in most of the game modes for this. So that means once you get the hang of it, once you figure out how that mechanic works, as long as you can then apply that to the additional things that the other game modes require you to do. Yeah, you can start having some really, <laughs> some really fun little exchanges going on. Yeah, there were some real oh shit moments going on in that particular exchange. Ah, oh, this was this was fun. This is this is where this game sort of went from being oh this is all right to ah this is actually a lot of fun. <laughs> Just goes to show I should have read the manual before playing. Just for context, I did actually end up recording this gameplay uh, before. I recorded the the brief single player component of this game as well so no i i made the mistake of not really reading the manual thoroughly before we started playing the two-player mode and i i probably should have done that but uh, there you go you live and learn you see a much more even score this time around as well it's just that one mechanic Made the game much more enjoyable and fair and evenly matched between the two of us. There we go. So Fuspong was was a lot of fun once we figured that out. So again, we got four play variants on there. We then move on to hockey. There are several versions of this with varying numbers of paddles. We just played this one here where you have just have one paddle each. Um, and the aim again is the same as always. Um, get it into the goal. And this time the goal is not off the side of the screen or out of a gap in the wall. Uh, it is inside that black bracket there. That is your goal. And again, I discovered in short order that yes, you can use speed up in hockey as well. Now the fun thing about hockey is because scoring a goal is not going off the side of the screen in this case, you can actually get the ball behind both of the goals as well uh, which can make for some interesting yet unpredictable shots but at the same time the much more limited size of the goal area in this can make it a little bit trickier to actually get your shots on target so while this mode was fun it felt a little bit more luck based than some of the other ones, particularly once we started getting to some of the really excessive bouncing matches. Mm -hmm. 
Again, we're quite evenly matched, though, so... That suggests that we're, we're either both equally terrible, or the game is reasonably well-balanced. To be fair, when it's moving that speed, it is quite difficult just to hit the ball, let alone aim it where you want it to go. <laughs> or indeed, you can score an own goal, as I did there. Beautifully done. This looks dangerous to me. It was. <laughs> it was extremely dangerous. Yeah, I ended up rather enjoying this mode as well. In fact, the, the game as a whole, I found very enjoyable. I was expecting this to be a bit of a chore to play, just because like you think of Pong and you think, oh, primitive. But there's enough variety and interest in this game for there to be plenty of variety and for each game to feel like something surprisingly substantially different from the last. At heart, you're still just moving paddles back and forth and bouncing a ball around, but just something about the little tweaks made to the formula at each time are enough to keep it feeling true to the spirit of Pong while at the same time making it feel like a unique game. Which I guess is part of the reason why Pong is such a classic and why it's endured for so long, is because it's a really flexible format for a very simple but reliably enjoyable competitive game. And the reason why the original has endured so well when various attempts to remake it over the years have failed it's because those remakes have often tried to add too much at once you notice in this case that there's, there's no more than one or two very simple elements being added to the basic mechanical formula of Pong so in this case it's just it's Pong but you need to get it in a goal that's all it is And foosball was Pong with a pile of paddles, where you need to get it in a goal. So that's just two simple changes. Makes a game that feels very different from standard Pong. And this was part of the strength of some of these early Atari 2600 games, is... In order to get that that number you would see on the front cover of the packaging that said 55 video games or whatever, in order to get that number up, you'd often find the program is coming up with really creative and interesting alternative ways to play. It's how we ended up with so many different ways to play combat. And how many different methods of shooting there are in air sea battle. Because the more variations on the formula you can provide, the more sort of perceived value there is for the player. And in the early days of gaming, where a lot of people still didn't really quite know what a video game really was and what its possibilities were, yeah, that was a huge selling point. So... You could sell someone a game that sort of was just one thing, or you could sell them something like Pong Sports, where you could say, well, in this game you can play Pong, you can play Super Pong, you can play hockey, you can play football, you can play foosball, you can play all this sort of thing, without telling them that they're all essentially the same game with some slight tweaks. But yeah, the only real downside to this package is that the only single-player mode is basic Pong. 
So you can't play any of these more interesting modes against a computer opponent. You have to have a friend. And in order to get the absolute most out of the package, you ideally want to have three people around to play. I guess there's nothing stopping one person controlling two players worth with two paddles or two controllers in the case of the Switch version. But even so, even so, that's a bit, it's a bit of an occupational hazard with these early 2600 games in that they they required you to play multiplayer to get the most out of them. All right. There we are with 24, uh, sorry, 21 points are on hockey mode. Now, at this point, uh, we decided to take a short break uh, because both of our thumbs were starting to hurt a little bit. Uh, so I just scrolled through the rest just to see what else we had. There's Quadrapong there, which is four player Pong. It uh, goes in four directions. Then we had Handball, which we'll move on to next. There's Volleyball. And then there's Basketball. And that is all of it, I think. There we go. So. At this point, we took a short break, and we will be back in just a moment for the remainder of the games. That's me, taking my third curtain call at the Alhambra Bradford. Sit! They loved me. Oh, sorry, I thought this was the party. This is the party! Oh. Right! Who's for Atari? <laughs> What's more, it's my party! Music Hall's dead sunshine. Pac-Man, Missile Command, Super Breakout, that's where the action is. All linked up, young man? Just a moment! <laughs> right, anyone for Haunted House? <laughs> you have to be fast on your feet for this, Ernie. Oh, don't say that, I want to show you who's tap dancing next. Atari. Simply more fun and games. Okay, we returned from our break. Uh, in order to pick up where we left off. So we're going to skip over the other hockey ones because they're just hockey with more um, bats, paddles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and we'll move on to handball, um, which I, I tend to think of as a bit more like squash, but I don't really know the sport of handball anyway. So the principle behind this one is you're not uh, trying to get the ball... Well, you are kind of are trying to get the ball past each other. Uh, but essentially what you have to do is someone serves the ball, which will happen in a moment. When you're ready. Either of you. Someone just serve. Please serve. There we go. So the ball comes back, someone hits it, and that, then their paddle starts blinking. And that means that while your paddle is blinking, you are not allowed to hit the ball. So you basically have to alternate between being the one to hit the ball and avoiding hitting the ball. So if you hit the ball when your paddle is blinking, your opponent will get a point. Um, if your opponent misses the ball when they are supposed to hit it, so when their paddle is not blinking, you will get a point. And I, that's that's basically it. It's a very simple game, and I'm not sure it's it's one of the better ones here in Pong Sports, but uh, it's an interesting variation. The, like I say, I'm not 100% convinced works. But credit to them for trying something a little bit different. So if you're wondering who is who in this one, uh, I am the purpley blue one, and my wife is orange. So she's currently beating me. I'm pretty sure you played a 21 in this as well, if I remember correctly. Missed. And I think, I think you can use speed up in this as well. We don't appear to be doing that at the moment, but I'm pretty sure you can use speed up in this. Although we're both doing a fairly good job of <laughs> missing the ball when we're supposed to be hitting it at most opportunities anyway. There we are. It's sped up now. I do kind of like the colour scheme on this one. 
the sort of yellow on brown is very very 1970s it reminds me of sort of the old bbc2 idents um not sure about that virulent purple on there because that clashes horribly with the brown and uh yeah i can see that giving you a slight headache after a while but uh now the yellow on brown is quite pleasing certainly But yeah, as you can see, there's 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 not a not a ton of excitement in this particular game mode because it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel as directly competitive as the other modes in this game, which is a bit of a shame. But you know, as I say, one of the nice things about this collection is that there's such a variety of different things to do with very simple core mechanics. So it's, it's understandable that maybe some of them work a bit better than others. As you can see, I'm romping ahead at the moment. Part of this game mode, I think, is sort of trying to psych out your opponent a bit and trying to distract them. Because if you can sort of, if you can sort of jiggle your paddle around in front of where they are and put them off, that can be a valid tactic. As long as you make sure you don't hit the the ball accidentally when you're not supposed to. But yeah, this this wasn't our favourite. But it's okay. It's almost over. Eighteen to six. Nineteen to six. Twenty to six. Match points. Oh, getting that. Oh, oh, are we looking at a comeback here? Are we looking at a comeback? I don't think we are, but you know, just thought I'd try and inject a little drama to the proceedings. Anyway, that's handball. You can play that with whammy as well. You can also play that four player if you really want to. Now, here's an interesting one. This is volleyball. Um, which unfolds very differently from the other ones in that it, if, rather than being from a sort of top-down perspective it's from a side-on perspective uh, and it has gravity uh, unfortunately it also has a very high net uh, which it's very easy to accidentally repeatedly hit the ball into so as you can see both of us were struggling a bit with this one <laughs> Uh, and you can also jump as well, which basically just snaps your paddle up into the air, allowing you to sort of take higher shots and potentially make the ball go a bit further. But you also run the risk of the ball just passing by you completely while you're doing that. So this is one of those games I could very much sort of see the potential of, but there's there's quite a high... I guess it's I guess you'd say there's probably quite a high skill floor on this one because you've got to be comfortable with getting that ball under control immediately and working with the physics. Which is not something you really have to do on the the sort of more top down takes on Pong. But dealing with gravity on this one just makes a makes a massive difference to the experience. Yeah, that was that was nice use of the jump there. Sort of shooting the ball over my head. I never quite nailed that throughout this whole game. I did win eventually. But I didn't quite get my head around effective use of the jump. So just a reminder, once again I am on the right and my wife is on the left. She's putting up a respectable fight after that initial struggle, though. But that net, that net repeatedly proves to be both our downfalls. Uh, that and moving out of the way when the, of the ball when we're supposed to catch it. <laughs> it's a tricky old game, this one. It's one that's probably more fun if you've both had the opportunity to practice a little bit more. Just because... 
it's so different to the others it's not quite it's not got quite as much immediacy as um the other games in here all right so the last game we have to play here is basketball so the aim in this one again this is another sort of side on one with gravity and physics but the difference here is the ball dropping off the bottom of the screen doesn't score anyone a point it just keeps bouncing until someone gets the ball into the opponent's basket it's a little bit picky about how it lands in the basket so if you knock it in from underneath like i'm doing there again i'm on the right uh, it doesn't really work but if you sort of hit it from above or if you get kind of get it in from the side it seems to work in a lot of cases now the challenge with this one is the fact that as you can see when you just hit the ball normally it doesn't bounce high enough to get into the basket so you need to sort of get a bit of a volley going bounce it off some walls put some spin on it from the corner of your paddle in order to actually get it high enough to go into the basket so this is quite a challenge and this this game ended up going on for quite a long time as a result as you'll see but um i enjoyed this one i enjoyed this one more than the volleyball because it didn't feel quite as much like you were just repeatedly messing up over and over again it's it's quite hard to mess up in this one it is possible to get it in your own basket uh, but it's not a case of just repeatedly missing the ball because missing the ball in this one doesn't matter it just bounces down the bottom and that leads to things like it, you remember in the hockey game where you could bounce it behind the goal and that sort of thing at least interesting situations like that where you can make the ball move around the screen in unusual and creative ways in an attempt to sort of throw your opponent off a bit but again the biggest the biggest challenge in this one is simply getting the ball high enough to get it into the basket which is something my my wife found a bit of a struggle but once i sort of noticed that hitting it off the corner of your paddle tended to make it go faster and higher I started to pull ahead in this one as you can see just sort of catch it get it under control there in the middle then hit it off the corner and it went high enough and sailed straight into the basket but th this is one of those games i like because it does not in the slightest bit resemble the support it, the sport it's supposed to be based on i've said numerous times on this series before that the, the the most fun sports games on the atari 2600 are the ones that are just fun video games rather than necessarily accurate recreations of the sport this is very little like basketball aside from the fact that you're supposed to be getting a ball into a basket but it's fun it's fun i really enjoyed this one It's one of those games that sort of felt like there was an inherent silliness and an inherent comedy value to and it's just a bunch of lines and a square moving around a screen but just the just the, the sort of physics of it and the way the ball bounces and the way it sort of arcs gracefully into one of the baskets there is just something very amusing and pleasing about this game that i, I enjoyed a lot it was a, it was a nice way to wrap up our time with pong sports even if this match did end up going on for quite a long time <laughs> as you can see both of us kind of getting to grips with the controls in this one now well not 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 so much getting to grips with the controls because the, the controls are just the same as they are in all the others it's the the paddle control to move left and right and that's about it i'm not even convinced that you can use um speed up and whammy in this one um because those sort of maneuvers don't really fit in with the the added gravity you can't jump like you can in volleyball so it's just all about grabbing control of that ball and knocking it into the net as well as you can
But yeah, on the whole, I was really quite impressed with Pong Sports because, I mean, it's it's one of the earliest Atari 2600 games, so it's got that distinctive, very primitive, chunky look to all its visuals. But the sheer variety of different gaming experiences you can have with this one cartridge is really surprising, actually. So as long as you've got a friend to play with... I mean, that's the that's the big issue with this if if you want to call it an issue so these days releasing a sports game with without a single player mode would be absolutely unthinkable because well i mean even if people do spend a fair amount of their time playing online in sort of things like the fifa's ultimate team or whatever For a lot of time, people are going to be sitting by themselves playing the game. And in cases like this game, where 90% of the game is completely inaccessible if you don't have a second player, because literally the only thing you can play by yourself in this game is uh, what it calls Robot Pong, the single player version. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit silly. Well, no, it, no, it, 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 it's not silly, because... When you think back to the launch of the 2600, and the very different sort of culture there was in the home at the time, we're talking about a period in history where sort of families gathering around the television, maybe having dinner by the around the television or and just sort of hanging out together and having fun together that there, there weren't there were reasons for people to lock themselves away in their rooms and do stuff there were like books and stuff like that but for the most part family time around the television was very much a thing and one of the things a lot of these early 2600 games facilitated was a means for families to have fun together it was uh, very much sort of the Wii of its day, if you want to look at it like that, because, yeah, they were just games with simple rules, simple controls that anyone could learn easily. And you get to sit back, relax, have a bit of fun with your family, which is nice. So, yeah, I can't really fault Pong Sports too much for that. And in terms of value on offer, well, you've got a lot of different games to play there including plenty with four player variants if you happen to have enough people in the same room at the same time or indeed if you can get anyone playing online on atari flashback classics but good luck with that anyway that's that for today as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time